Okay, welcome back to The Devil in Detail, the Grendel Reread podcast. I'm Eli. I'm Ben. This is episode 17. Can you believe it? Wow. Uh, yeah, we're really cranking through them, man. We're, we're doing good. I did a little bit of uh, fake math on all the uh, the Hunter Rose stories. And so anything that's prestige, I'll count as two issues. And we are still at about the, we're on the cusp of the halfway point. Of all the Hunter of Rose. All the, of all the Hunter Rose stuff, if you count Silverback and... Um, oh, US. interesting. Silverback, we decided. Yeah, that. right? There you go. Yeah. Um, and and the, the, the grand finale of Behold the Devil, my God. But right now we're going to start uh, the second uh, short story collection. Not That's right. black, white, and red. It's red, white, and black. Red, white, and black. Exactly. And this one took place, or this one was published uh, many years later. The original one was 1998, and this one was 2002. Oh, you know, you you did more research than I did. Oh, okay. I, th- I thought that I assumed that they were they were, it was a few years apart. Um, it's uh, it's it's interesting. We're gonna we're gonna talk at length, I'm sure, about different sequencing things and different choices that were made in putting the omnibus together. Oh yeah, exactly. Um, you know, because it's you know there's th- things are in order, sort of, for two different chunks. You know, they kind of go through a few different cycles. Um, uh, such are the mysteries of Grendel. Absolutely. The beautiful mystery of Grendel. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to see uh, exactly when each one was published. I do see Black, White, and Red was published 98-99. All right, yeah, so I looked it up and I was right. It was um, 1999 for Black, White, and Red and 2002 for Red, White, and Black. Hmm. So Ben, what's been going on with you, man? What's been going on with you this week? I was really lucky to be able to spend all week making comics. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I had, I had a great time doing it. I uh, laid out the first, I, my layouts are really like, you know, as I get more into the project of a new project, they sort of become preliminary pencils as I get more and more comfortable. So I'm about 23 pages into lettering and laying out uh, the first issue of the new project. And I have a meeting with the writer tomorrow. And, you know, there's places where I have, radically adjusted what they've written those parts are much looser and so you know that's the pitch material and then there's you know once i get into the rhythm of the story and you know sort of figure out what they're trying to do um it gets much more by the book by the script and the pages are you know they're not really layouts they're just they're like early pencils nice. so it's been it's been a lot of fun what are you up to you're always creating, man. It's awesome. I, I wish I had a, like a team that I worked with more so on, on any of the books that I ever worked with. It's honestly something that never really occurred to me, I almost feel like, but it's super cool. I've just been, um, again, gathering all the stuff, shipping out wizards, editing our episodes. Today, I got five big boxes, the rest of my wizard order. And so I'll be packing up those most of the night tonight, getting everything out. And I mean, again, I mean, that's what I say every week, but it's an ongoing process. But as soon as, basically, as soon as I finish tonight and get all of the rest of these orders out, I'll really be able to just put Wizard kind of behind me and and move headstrong into Image Grand Design and into the Babe Lord comic and into the other things, because now it's kind of like everyone who got one's got one. And, you know, now anytime anyone orders one, it's just one and done. I can send it right out. And it's kind of like going to be a big hurdle in these next couple of days that I'm kind of like over the hump of. So it feels really good. That's great. Well, you know, when you wear the publisher and editor hat, you know, it's, you're working, but it's, you know, you're not doing pages. So you got to flex different creative yeah. and professional muscles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I think the good news is that image grand design is almost done. It it's is, really knocking. Yeah, it's it's really it's really doing doing its thing, and it's like pushing two hundred pages, and that that'll be a, a tremendous feather in your cap when it's done. So we all look forward to seeing it. In all of our caps, and and I mean everything we see for it is amazing. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I'm blown away, and I can't wait. I did my interview with Rocco for his. Um, he's doing like a podcast kind of oral history thing. That was pretty fun. 
And uh, so, yeah, I'm psyched. I'm psyched to cool, do man. this. And um, this was a great week of Granolin for us. Yeah, man. It was uh, – we, we, we got two quickies and then two two long ones. Yeah. Um, uh, really, it's uh, – we start off with uh, a Matt Wagner story, Devil's yeah. Week. It's super design-focused, yeah. um, lots of screen tone. What would oh, what, yes. you make of this one? Well, um – Let's get into the theme song and then we'll be back and uh, oh we'll dig into gosh. these stories. <laughs> I don't remember our format. Let's go. It's like the devil is my best friend. Hunter rolls with the pen to the fork end. Or to time end. Like Orion. Jupiter, my kin, bloodline, private We control the whole shit The wolf won't beef, then we feast off the rip Behold the devil in detail Behold the devil in detail Alright, we're back And what a, you know, another amazing theme song by Mans Dunbar and Zach Johnson Thanks guys And we're getting into these ones, like you said Grendel's De- The Devil's Week by Matt Wagner, which is, I mean, laid out beautifully and and vividly colored in screen tone in a way that I haven't seen anything. I mean, it's it's beautiful, man. Yeah, it's super evocative of this like art deco film noir film poster kind of thing that guys our age can only sort of dream of like where the influences and anchor points are because you know, I, I feel like at a certain point, history kind of becomes part fictionalized. Yeah. You know, you know, um, and so uh, Matt's really kind of dredging things up and, and bringing that kind of like Batman animated series retro futurism really hard into, oh into God. this. So it's, it's eight pages like all the other stories, but it's structured as single illustrations like we just described. Um, Every day of the week has a two sentence little block of text and it tells us about uh, the dubious deeds of Everett Roth. Uh, do you know where this originally was was presented? It I have wasn't. No idea. Yeah, I don't either. I, I didn't. I didn't get that. This is not in black, white, and red, white, and black. Is that? What I you're don't saying? believe so. Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah. It's an extra. It might say in the uh, in the indicia in the omnibus. Uh, Omnibus publication information. Yeah. So yeah, this is kind of like a um, intrigue. It's kind of like a upscale intrigue between, as you said, Everett Roth, and he's having this affair with Laura Stanion, aka the Hempstead Honey. Hempstead is, uh, I think it's a. I'm gonna mess up the terms. It's uh, a like Long Island corporation of villages. I think Freeport is among them. Oh, interesting. And so it's like. Uh, it's like working middle, middle class, seaside, Long Island suburbs kind, oh, of, interesting. kind of spot, I, I think. Uh, cool. So, uh, yeah, look at this. It opens up with, uh, you know, Hunter, Hunter uh, at, a, you know, at a society affair, weaving his web. There's a black widow coming down. Yeah. Um, and Hunter has this kind of like, oh, who, me? I didn't. I didn't spread the rumor about Everett Roth and <laughs> and uh, whoever it is, but and and so Matt cut all the screen tone himself, yeah. just separately cutting each and everything and laying it in. Sure, it's insane. Yeah, it's crazy how they how they sit up right next to each other. You yeah, know, that's it, it. Has almost like a digital precision. Absolutely uh, about it, but there must be. You know, we'll never cut this. We'll never cut and you know, lay it down. I mean, we could. I don't really could, want but, to. Yeah. I don't really want to. <laughs> we got the computers, you know. I think one time I did buy a sheet of it, um, and it wasn't. Del- it might have been a deleter sheet, but it wasn't from you know the site you're supposed to. It was it was sitting in a rack at a new at a Manhattan art store for 15 years, yeah. and I got it home, and it wouldn't. Uh, I couldn't do anything with it. It had like dried out or whatever. Oh, that sucks. I couldn't get it off the sheet. I was like, ah, fuck this. Fuck this. 
But um, you know, we have we have a, a few friends. Uh, uh, Rick Lopez, I think, has he's got some. Has a, he has everything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a man. He's got he's, got, he's, got he's an art store, a veritable art store. Yeah. The one thing that I think about a lot, and I've used this term when we talk about the the dot pattern screen tones, is the different gauges. Right. Right, because you've got fine dots and medium dots at different percentages. I don't know. I think it means like the amount that there's, you know, the percentage of how big the dot is versus the space between the dots. I, right. I believe. Um, oh, that makes sense. You know, and so I think for the most part, Matt's using it looks like, I don't know, three or four different gauges of screen here. Yeah, at least. Um, you know, and funny things happen, like when you, when you use, for me, like when you use a gauge that's too high, it can sometimes not fit, but he's using large gauges here, but because the art is so graphic and so bold, it all fits together. Yes. Like really, really nicely. So I think, you know, a good example of this is like um, on the very first page, the the one that's on Hunter's neck is like, there's a lot of, lot of big dots in there. Yeah, his whole face is, is got a wide gauge on it. I'm talking about the before on the title page, excuse oh, me. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah, at yeah. The, look at this, look at the screen on Hunter's, on Hunter's on his neck. neck. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. So, that, it, and it, it's, it still fits really, really nicely. Another thing the gauges uh, seem to do is, at least in my eyes, they imply color. You know, it's like the gray tones, like I see these as different colors, you know, and, and your eye experiences them. And if you kind of like glaze your eyes over a little bit, you, it, it shows up as different gradient, you know, as different brightnesses. And, and then my yeah. brain interprets it as color. Sure. Definitely as values. Of exactly. Black. You yeah. Know, you look at these buildings on, this is on the First. Monday page. Yeah. The skyline, you know, you can tell exactly where the sun is or the, oh, yeah. you know, or the moon or whatever it is based on which plane it, you know, the plane on the Precision. right has the super heavy, the super heavy gauge. Um, yeah, yep. man. So and anyway. <laughs> Story-wise, yeah, they're, they're going through this thing like they were, they were, she's publicly denying in any press inquiries of any type of relationship. So now the press is starting to get the word that this pre predominant Everett Roth may be having an affair with this, the so-called Hempstead honey. Right. Wednesday comes around. And there's another prestigious stockholders party, and Everett can I, Roth. Can I, ask you, can I ask you a question about the Hempstead honey? Sure. Sorry about that. She, uh, you know, she'd shot her, uh, she'd shot her gangster boyfriend. Oh yeah, I left it. Uh, it refers to her, uh, her dubious acting. Uh, did, did you think that it, it meant like stage and screen acting, or her acting on the legal stand? Oh, interesting. I wasn't, I honestly wasn't sure. First I thought one and then, and then guessed the other. I was thinking maybe like she was a porn star or something. Oh, Hempstead interesting. Honey. Yeah. Like, uh, her like dubious like, acting like Portia who will, who will get another, another uh, panel mentioned before. Mm -hmm. I really, I really like things like, uh, look at the, the smoke trail coming out of her face. Oh, it's black to white. Yeah. Really, really just like simple and, classy design stuff anyway mm -hmm. we can move forward <laughs> move on to wednesday <laughs> all right it's, each panel is so good and and just i mean again here's thursday is insane uh, anyway wednesday um everett roth and his wife engage in a heated argument in public when some photos classic grendel move some photos were delivered to her of um him and her and him and her him and her, excuse me, him and the Hampstead honey, Laura, together. Right. And so she's all pissed <laughs> off, and Lucinda Roth is shrieking. He tries to convince her that the photos are uh, have been faked, right. which is which in 2020 is very funny, um, and it's it's all it's almost uh, like predictive in a you know a story that take story that's written in the year 2000 that takes place in 1980. Meh, but is a retro future eighties right. where, where, you know, Photoshop and deep fakes and lasers and <laughs> holograms are, yeah. are a thing. We see so more than funny. enough. I really enjoy the faces at the party here because a lot yeah. of like the details are very, you know, 
you can see shades of other Matt Wagner styles in the creases and folds and the faces and stuff. Okay, but then yeah. there's, there's, there's more, you know, there's extra, there's like almost uh, like a, a nouveau cubism going on. Like, look at this guy with the, um, this guy on the right with the, like the triangle shadow under his eye. Right. Just like really, like just like really interesting shapes and yeah, the woman up front and like the breasts are just circles and yeah, and the shadow cuts vertically into them. Just right, you know, it's it it it, re it reminds me of like you know the these like nineteen eighties commercial design styles that like right. you and I don't really have a frame of reference for, but someone who is in art school at that time he, like he must have just been absorbing it you know <laughs> yeah exactly oh here's raja you like this argent one a lot huh um well some of the some of the layering oh my god hey raja raja Pern in the microwave or in the microphone um i hope not in the microwave <laughs> yeah just the layers and like the what it looks like when they're overlapping like yeah. down at the towards the like head of this train or whatever and in the shadows by the eyes and the mountains there it's just like so cool yeah i there's a name for that i think it's i've said it before but i don't think i say it right more morris patterns m-o-r-e-s mm. and i think that it's usually meant uh as a bad thing right as something that you would get on accident Right. Um, I don't think Matt's getting it on accident. I don't know? either. Right. It um, looks amazing. But, but there might, you know, if you have a hard copy or a trade of the original issue, I'd be interesting. I'd be interested to see what they look like at a slightly larger scale. Ah, uh, yeah. Because there, there might be more of that distortion going on, scaled down in the omnibus. Yeah, Perhaps. we'll have to figure out. I'll put it on on the screen. Uh, we'll figure out where this originally was printed, and then we can. Yeah, yeah. The ge but the geometry throughout all this is just like so, so creative and inventive, and yeah, it's. It, I did a um, I did a, a stained glass uh, window design right for my for my father in law uh, maybe last week I, I think I think it was last week uh, something like that, and I was definitely trying to think about these sorts of shapes and and patterns and stuff like that right that could be easily represented with little you know glass pieces yeah you know just like the how you you know how you use the tangent lines to form new shapes and stuff like that and you know matt seems to be doing a lot of just like bold graphic geometry and yeah, he's the master you know, he of that. makes it he makes it look easy you know it, We'll talk about making it look easy more than once in the next hour, I'm sure. Yeah, dude. Um, anyway, so Argent, Argent, of course, gets a gets an, anomin an, an anonymous tip. Yeah, Argent, so they're always getting anonymous tips that always. lead them into violence. You, is it Stacy? Like, oh, is that always Stacy or what? You know, is Stacy the one? I think it's. I think it's Hunter. Uh, maybe it could be. Oh it, yeah. You know what? Be. This is this could be actually Hunter because of all the different like strings that he's pulling in this story. Right. I mean, the first image of Hunter is him with the web. That's right. That he's, that he's weaving. You know, this deadly web that he weaves for reasons that we will, that we will come out. So anyway, there's mm -hmm. a, you know, shit goes down 40 miles out of town. And um, a high-speed chase leaves a shootout, leads to a shootout, and then two suspects are dead. Yeah. Every page here is another eight-page short story. Yeah, really. You know, that could be <laughs> that could be played with. But a lot, you know, a, because there's so much like repetition of motifs in this whole thing, we've already seen how a lot of these things play out. We've seen the naughty blackmail photos. Yeah. At least three times already. It's just like that's the most vicious and efficient method of getting his stuff done. Yeah, and it works, and he does it you know? every time. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he does. Yep. Um, and you um, know, and maybe if it was a different time, they would have you know he would send them videos or do something on the computer. But it's just like nothing hits harder than delivering that Manila envelope full of you know 
risque yeah. photos. I mean, the, the, the real MO is that, you know, he pulls strings so that on one hand, you get fucked with in your personal life so that the one two punch is that when the horrible violence you know shows up at the docks you're so distracted with the nudie pics that you're yes. you know you can't deal with it exactly <laughs> oh He's man. A, yeah on to friday on to friday cool man my gal friday all right so um this one so anyway so uh the what are the miss hempstead or whatever her name is she goes to Roth's secret penthouse um, and they're trying to, they're discussing dual um, press releases. Right. Which makes like me think stories. that she, yeah, that she is actually a actress of, of stage Some and screen. Note. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they do a bunch of blow um, and then, and then he rapes her. Uh, look at the, it, the use of red here is the Times Square Coca-Cola sign. Oh really? It took, took me a moment to parse together. But nice. Like, yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have connected that either. I love the um the the mirror of Coke looks like uh clip art, looks like Macintosh eighties yeah. pixel art. I thought yeah. it was great. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, so that that night really turns turns on her and and then everything slowly starts to unwind from then Saturday. Um, Stanion reports the crime. I, I just want to go back again yeah. um, and say not to not to dwell on it, but you know this won't this won't be the last rape in this in Hunter's saga. Yeah. Um, and the other the other one, which is really brutal, and we've sort of front loaded, like 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 Diana can just talk about it. Like, what are we gonna say? is like evil has infected people and that's and that's the deed that they that they do when they've been corrupted by like the the zeitgeist of aggression yeah so he's so he's like he's like so stressed out and strung out and coked up that like that like that's just they're already having take, a no. tryst, you know. He's just yeah. like he just does whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, it's terrible. Anyway, not to dwell on that. Thank you. Well, yeah, she. Well, then she's had enough, and so she reports the crime. But like, police seize the opportunity to issue a warrant for Roth's arrest. Their hope is to crack his involvement with the drug drug ring under harsh interrogation. However, still barricaded away, Everett Roth opens his arterial vein with a bread knife. Oh Jesus! Yeah, and again, like this, this work by Matt is glorious and and very reminiscent yeah. of this. Like, I'm trying to think. Uh, he he was a poster artist who recently died. Peter, who did a, oh, I think I said Peter Max. Oh like, yeah, you're, I think you're, you're talking about the guy whose name I can't remember. Right, exactly. He did he did posters for like the Monterey Pop Festival and these like jazz different yeah. things, and they and they had these real swoopy lines yeah. and, and colors and stuff in the '60s and '70s. This is probably this this swoop right here is probably one of the most interesting uses of the screen tone because it sort of dips in and then he shifts everything up. Right. Uh, yeah, like it's a waving thing you know like did he have to cut each piece separately maybe here kind of well, really well done you can, you can see, see a few places where they where it's you know where if this was done digitally you wouldn't have these problems but it's such a you know i think that matt does it because it's hard and he's a hundred percent on point 98.5 percent of the time yeah and the times where it's noticeably you know, off are on the most technically challenging thing that you could possibly imagine doing. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah. And and they still look good and sometimes the non perfection yeah. makes it even have like an extra coolness to it. Absolutely. You know, it's it's funny, like if you look in um Everett's hair, mm -hmm. there's a there's a few you know, there's a few stray lines and and this and that almost has like a woodcut quality to it. Um and there's all kind there's all kinds of cool stuff going on here. Um, one thing that I noticed going through, is this it? Is this oh there's one more page? One more day, yeah. Oh my god, I love the I love the blood coming out, becoming part of that wave pattern. So cool. 
just like how the cigarette smoke was kind of doing the doing the same thing. Yep, in the other screen. Um, and then also, this is cool. Matt Matt stylizes the Grendel mask a little bit on Saturday. Kind of curls it around. Yeah, there and the the triangular and... nose and all that. It has yeah. kind of a Teddy Christensen sort of flair yeah. to it a little bit. Yeah. Really, I love this page so much. Amazing job, yeah. Matt. Yeah, the, the table, all the, the screen tone on the table is just like all over the place. It reminds me kind of of how that one time he said, he's like, I just had this leftover, so I just kind of cut it up and threw it in, you know? Like maybe he just had those little scraps and he's like, I can use these, you know? Yeah, that's, Who knows? that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, when, when were those Batman black, white, and red stories? Uh, Batman black and white stories. He said that was the end of it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, this is the what early 2000s. The last yeah. Time. yeah, maybe. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So then on Sunday, um, I was just going to read it because it's an interesting tie up. The subsequent investigation reveals Roth's financial ties to a Panamanian cartel, an organization rumored to be defiant in the dealings with the mysterious crime Lord Grendel. Laura Stan Stanion is found in her apartment dead of a twin bladed abdominal 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 wound <laughs> and so and the just whole thing is just a message to the cartel really everyone's gonna die unless you get in line exactly like there's no see, reason she has to die <laughs> no but it was all it was all to send a message like i'm grendel and i'm on my way up and and later on in andy coon's story which is very a very cool kind of like first meeting story mm -hmm. we're kind of seeing that yes they are kind of in a in a um timeline form you know so we're kind of seeing some early stories of grendel in this time period here yeah the uh the blood on stanion laura stanion is splattered mm -hmm. and it's like the only element in this entire story that isn't like super clean and geometric right. you know, that Blocky. has any kind of organic, you know, quality to it. Yeah. And, and then this Grendel up here too, it's, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, that's yeah, really, really distorted. That's our album art. If, if nothing else though, actually I wanted to make Jill Thompson <laughs> album art, but I mean, when she, just beautiful. When she's dead here at the lower bottom. It looks like, um, you know, I was talking about like eighties, like like the cover of like an Ayn Rand novel like oh, yeah yeah I said that last graphic, week too. yeah right <laughs> you know? I think about those like um I feel like they were always in hair salons back then and they were like for like a spray or something and they were like a lady to the side with like you know jubilee style glasses or something mm -hmm. like that or... has this like kind of classical greek throwback cubism kind of yeah. thing going on yeah. one thing that i liked structurally about these pages is the um first of all the spreads are all really like interesting interestingly done because the the text is next to each other by the by the seam mm -hmm. and they're in that vertical white stripe and at the top of that strip there's a different geometric pattern right just designed in there um and then when you get to the last one, like the last few kind of have a little bit more storytelling in them. Like on Friday, uh, when he's forcing himself, there's that lightning bolt that sort of tangent lines itself into oh, him, right. yeah. in, into the corner. And then um, when he dies, the fork is in the, is in the pattern. And then on Sunday, when you do the end, it flips so that the text is up top and the, the end and the graphic element is at the bottom. Just very, just like really thoughtful and well considered. And I, I can't get enough. That's one thing that Matt just does better than any other artist, in my opinion, is sets up these these pages that are more than a comic book page. They're laid out, you know, as if they're like a spread in an art book, or they're like a Sunday spread, or like you know that it's this. It's it's more than just a nine panel grid every time. You know? Yeah, yeah, thoughtful so that it makes you really consider like what's going on and also the the value that the form has. You know, it's 
he was talking about the scope that he sees comics being able to encompass and like Joe Matt being like, well, it has to be, you know, you need gutters and you need, you know, tears and you need, you know, the geometry can only do this for it to be comics. And I was like, well, I have kind of a broader you know, <laughs> yeah. view of things. Here's awesome. A, let's move into our next one. Uh, show off your t-shirt. Yes, I've been saving it, guys. I've been saving it. Very nice. Such a cool design. I loved this. This right from the very first time I read it, it really struck me as just something fun and cool. And I think it proves something to me. And and now necessarily this story isn't necessarily the canon because this shows that there is some sort of extra element that came in to Hunter. Is It's now it doesn't necessarily yeah, so say, metaphor, you, know? <laughs> you know, well, but I mean, if, right. if taken at face value, it would show that there is a little something else, uh, that there's something right. well, it's tough creature a, from beyond. There's a, there's a twist ending that we can't... Oh, there is a twist, yeah. We can't right. give away, and so I think that the mysteries of those questions are more tied to, to that twist. To the writer, yeah. Do you want to give us a little background on Jill Thompson, Singer Praises? Yeah, I mean... I, I mean, I don't know too much of her work, honestly. I know I know her from Sandman a little bit, is what I read. And then she has her creator own Scary Godmother, which also uh, was a play. She adapted into a play. She wrote uh, a stage production of it. Uh, it's like a children's um, uh, book, not necessarily children's YA, we could say. Sure. Uh, I also read that she worked at Kamiko on Elementals and a few other kind of fill in books oh, that she cool. was filling in. So she might have met Matt around that time. Um, and obviously this is like really well done watercolor painted style stuff. Yeah. There's a, she has a Sandman book in this style as well. I mean, she has Sandman issues that are in like her vertigo il illustration style. I think she did, might've done some Graham Morrison, maybe some invisible stuff as well, but there's like a little, little endless storybook book that's in this children's book watercolor style oh that's awesome as well and it's kind of i mean it kind of tells it kind of tells the devil by the deed story this one does basically yeah it, it's a, it's a it's a great recap and an, and a fresh perspective on the whole thing on this on the sadness of eddie and how his uh you know the devil is mentioned in the title of every single story the characters referred to as the devil and so this is how hell came to a young, lonely boy's life. Mm -hmm. A nasty little devil. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and so it's kind of speaking of him as this, like, host. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and that, you know, he was kind of empty until he found this, like, little devil. Yep. Sound is I, love that. I love that on the, the second page. Um, it talks about how, like, finding fire as a cleansing element of brutality and revenge was the first act that they took together and we saw that happening in uh teddy christensen oh, that's right yeah uh in, in in black white and red with the with the lighter and the gasoline and all that mm -hmm. um and then, and then uh jill has this thing where the devil makes its home in eddie's soul soul sweet soul um waiting for the bloody blossoming to arise oh my goodness <laughs> just really well said and it, it, just a really fun way that matt is is rolling the tail out and then each one of her illustrations this devil is just so cool look yeah such a fun way to use the mask and the devil and everything and yeah the lower the lower spikes or whatever mm -hmm. kind of come off the face yeah, they kind of uh, wrap. A number of times, yeah. It's, yeah. it's really it's really cool. And then also that it has pupils <laughs> inside the, the eyes is like, is super weird. Right. Um, what did you make of this like uh, Game of Life Monopoly board game kind of kind of illustration? Yeah, I guess it's kind of like showing, you know, the, the alternate path maybe that Eddie now is on after the devil... And it became one, you know, it's like um, taking, taking the darker route or whatever, maybe. Uh, well, um, yeah, it talks know. about the, the, uh, 
the path of woe and ennui. So there's teachers who tell him that you can't do things the way you want to do. There's bullies, as we know. What they, Eddie the Puss Face? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, and then there's like, uh, there's lockers to get shoved into. Um, there's, mm-hmm. I think this, this money is a schoolhouse. And- yeah, the money was the thing that I thought was was weird. What is, I, it's I see one. I think money by oh, it's just like being exposed to vapid, like commercial materialism. But then he he buys into that. Yeah, he's all well, about that. <laughs> you know, as, a, as showing an adult. that you need to 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 like to be a part of that world in order to, you know, get some of your like dirty little plans. Like this is a necessity in order to get these plans fully worked out. We're going to have to revenge is tied to power is tied to money. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Then uh, we Costa. Exactly. Yeah. Very um, like chillingly depicted here as this sort of, um, a siren that captivated the diab- diabolic boy. Really interesting. And again, the web is there, you know, um, again, yeah. she, she was weaving this web that she passed on to him that he continued to weave um, throughout life. Yeah. She, yeah. He, and she sets him on fire, his hair, his, as, as pre Jocasta Eddie, his hair is coiffed. Mm-hmm. And then, and then his, Head, his hair goes up like a match mm-hmm. and then later when we see him as hunter he has this like he has this like wild hair which is yeah. kind of it burned kinda away the old but like um um life fragile and finite held to his flame she expired with an ecstatic gasp and then yeah it's s- very sad yeah it we've, is we've talked you know and also the thing is that like he hasn't aged like he's still drawn in this chibi style yeah and she's like a grown-ass woman um and like the devil like laughing at the perversity of that like like that's the funniest fucking thing he's ever seen in his life yeah like oh like this is this is perfect (laughs) and then when eddie is like like this this is the trauma that that defines his life and the story says as much that like now that like like now that the world has like given and taken fuck the world and the devil's like my job is done yes i love it really really great he he decided to go meet up with the insane clown posse and then right there hit song fuck the world fuck the world Uh, and as we turn the page we now see as you said the older hunter rose with his quaffed his uh well-dressed in white tuxedo the devil there who's kind of looks like etrigan there a little bit the demon a little bit yeah it's his pose here is very like um young frankenstein putting on the ritz in a way it's like very yes. uh like showy i ta-da almost like um where the wild things are too kind mm, of, yeah, yeah, yeah something love that yeah his hellish sur- the the hellish surge of his metal once loosed was unquenchable. The boy became a man deadly and undaunted. The grief of his loss had freed him of all care and concern. Mm-hmm. And, and he began to see the mask when he looked in the mirror. He began to see the little devil's face. Mm-hmm. Little devil. The little devil. The, the illustration on the next one is really great. It's like the devil is writing Hunter's deeds in the blood that hunter has spilled and he's dipping the quill in the puddle so great um, now do you think he's uh, writing yeah. down his the murderers or is he crossing people off a list i think he's i think he's like supposed to be recording the saga which we've been taking uh, yes. in the countless extortions and kidnaps and these are the titular and, deeds that the devil yeah. has done and like he finds the you know he finds the you know the perverts and kills them extra brutally and all that mm-hmm. um i like that the text mentions uh, a comet uh mike Allred depicted oh that's a comet right as well which is so you know the 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 eternal question of whether the demonic forces are metaphor or, or literal is still kind of uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. 
mm -hmm. still kind of being teased with. So yeah. Um, I, then okay. The, the the one thing that I really enjoyed about the caption just beneath the pile of bodies that Chibi Grendel stands on is that um, the Devil Man was onerous and ominous. And I I looked up onerous. It means uh, like arduous, a, a difficult task. And so like mm. everything came easy to Eddie, but like, yeah, like, you know, geometry homework would be easy to someone like this. Getting away with like assassination and running criminal empire actually takes work. That's so it's not like, it's not like he just sits back, like he busts his ass, you know, to give us these stories. Right. Hunter, thank you. <laughs> um, and then we have a cursed and decrepit beast that has been following him. Uh, it pursued him with a single minded loathing, really cool image. A and the legs are, are done perfect. I feel like those are. Yeah. It's, it's funny that, um, yeah, it is. I, I, I uh, also like that the fork is kind of bleed, I guess bleeding oh. off the page. It doesn't yeah. quite bleed here, but you can imagine, you can imagine it bleeding. I can imagine absolutely it bleeding. Um, Everything like else the, is. Mm -hmm. I like the use of the word decrepit. Um, oh, yeah. Because he's still physically, you know, he's up on rooftops and jumping around going toe to toe with Grendel, but, and he will become decrepit later on. Like he's in a wheelchair, I believe. Yes. For Christine stuff. Yeah. Because didn't his spine get snapped when Grendel died? Something like that. But, so. but the use of the word decrepit here is is interesting. It might not it might not mean like it might mean a few things. Like it might mean that yeah, his knees hurt, but he still does this. Like he's still right, and he's uh, still super know, old and beat it. up, and, and he's right. not like and he's no sort of spring chicken over here. But spring he still old. still leaps leaps around and does his does his thing. I like I, it. I, I really like how um, like right above Argent, you see this like moon. And the blood from above is spilling to be kind of like a blood red moon, like the clouds that are looping around this moon. Sure. That's really well done. The misty, the misty cloud. Yeah, mm -hmm. very cool. And this fight, man, it's awesome. So they thrashed and flailed, thrashed and flailed, neither seeming ever to gain ground, neither seeming ever to weaken. Yeah, and we sure. know that when they tussle, they throw down. Yeah, it's a it's a very evenly matched thing. I really enjoy that, like uh, Jocasta, that Argent is depicted in not a cartoony right. style. Yes, which is which is kind of kind of cool. And even more so realistic in this uh, these three panels here in the fight, because then below he kind of gets like a beauty and the beast beast type of look. Yeah, we, we didn't mention Joel Thompson's work on beasts of burden. Okay. Um, which, which is, it's, uh, you know, it's a supernatural, uh, talking animals, supernatural, uh, dog society kind of thing. I don't know. Oh, cool. I think Evan Dorkin wrote it. Oh, um, Dorkin. But, yep. Anyway. Cool. This is where the things twist around a little bit. Mm -hmm. The pure little angel. Oh, naive and pure. Stood between them. Stacy. I she, like how Grendel has kind of a record scratch. You know, he's like, Urgh. yeah, yeah. Uh, now she's Destiny's lamb, the little angel. But she's beloved by both, as we both know. And we kind of see her, her beating, beating up the devil and kind of at first killing him but then kind of taking on because it's all she's ever seen and and as we know stacy gets her life is non-stop ups and downs twists and turns and it's dangerous yeah she she sort of disrupts the spirit of aggression yeah uh until she embodies it herself exactly sadly. uh and in the end, her innocence fell in shattered sacrifice to the defeat by evil and rage. And as we turn the page, the reveal that we were talking about at the beginning, these, this is just pages in Stacy's in her notebook. Yeah, very realistic watercolor, high angle, 
splash of the nurse coming in with a paper cup of meds mm -hmm. for Stacy in her bathrobe, emaciated. Very, yeah. Uh, you know, locked in her institutionalized room. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, All she has is one book, a leather-bound volume, and her thing there. I mean, is that is that Grendel's logs there or something? Is that... Yeah. I mean, there... It is shown later that I think she has them with her yeah, in that times. location. Right. Yeah. And also, and you know, the other thing is that when we go back to that room, there's, it might not be at this point in time, but they're covered in clippings and coverage. And, oh, that's right. Yeah. And stuff like her, that. His notes so, and stuff. you know, it's not, you know, it really is important to note that this entire tale is a primary source from Stacy. That it is, it is her perspective. Right. You know, it's not, it's not Nat as, I don't know what the term, omniscient, like third person God narrator. Right. It's, it's like what Stacy was told and what she experienced and what, and what she felt about it. And so, you know, what, you know, like the way that the relationship with Jocasta is depicted is, you know, innocent when compared to David, right. you know, the David Mack, like sex scenes. You know? Right. So right. it's like what he told her was, it's a, it's a combination of what he told her and probably more what she read in the logs. Um, and then how she processed this is how she processes it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah, great. I, I love Stacy's stuff as always. And um, Jill Thompson's work here is beautiful. And uh, now the shirt is in the full rotation. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, super, j just like so fitting. Like what, what an amazing like pairing of Matt playing to someone's strengths to further the, the you know, the saga. Yeah, really well done. And again, it it, it uh, makes me curious as to exactly what these artists receive from Matt as far as script and direction. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we can reach out to him about. Like, do you have any uh, scripts or anything for these types oh, that would of be, comics that you? That would be cool. Yeah. You know, one thing that Matt talked about in terms of writing process was that he doesn't take a lot of notes. Right. And that and that he kind of like gets the idea and the challenge is like, let me let me get this out. And, you know, to, I'm not going to say to mixed results, but it's just like, you know, if that's your process, like what comes out is what comes out and he's good at telling stories. And so one of the things that I was thinking about when we dug into this red, white, and black volume is what Matt had marinated on having finished the first short story cycle to say, okay, like now what did I leave out? What needs to be done? Because it seems right. pretty like, it seems pretty uh, intentional when you s skim through where this is going, mm -hmm. that like there's key devil by the deed scenes that he wanted to either do at the end or do later on. Right. These um, stories seem more direct or something. Like yeah. I mean, this, this, this series ends the way it ends in like three, four, five consecutive stories that are pulled directly out of Devil by the Deed. Ah, okay. Right? The, like the, the, you know, the last or second to last story is the rooftop fight that Matt draws. Oh, And then right. Drawn by Michael, Michael Zuli. Zuli does the, yeah, Michael Zuli does the rooftop conversation. Right. And there's just like a lot of key moments there. Um, but there's also in here let's say no more let's move on okay are you, are, are you a cliff chang fan uh i didn't know him too well no he, i saw that he does just like a ton of dc work he's like a big dc jobber he did the well he did the he did a i first heard of him uh when he did the brian azarello wonder woman series that was like one of a handful of new 52 books that would people would say oh this is you gotta read this one but like i'm not gonna read DC monthly books if you put a gun to my fucking head so right. it's like and there's one where she beats the shit out of Orion which I probably would have enjoyed but oh very cool I don't anyway but he uh he, the book that really made me sit up and take notice was uh his work on Paper Girls 
with uh, oh, okay. with, uh, Brian K. Vaughn. Nice. Um, okay, which, I've heard of that. Which is, oh, image man. book? Yeah, it's an image book. It's it's like an 80s uh, time travel sci-fi smorgasbord. Ooh. I read the first trade and loved it, and I'll, I'll get back to it one day. But it's, wow, it's really well drawn and um, really well colored and, and, and written and, and all that. And this is from 15 years prior to that, it would seem, something. Still very, uh, very well drawn. And, and yeah. uh, just an interesting way to tell this story. Um, one thing that you had mentioned to me is that this introduces, introduces Detective Sparks, who comes to be one of the main characters in uh, Behold the Devil. Yeah, she's a she's a NYC lady detective who uh, isn't going to take any shit, and she's mm-hmm. real fucking good at her job. And the first scene that she's in in uh, Behold the Devil is very similar to this, where they're like, "Yeah, I don't know if you can take it up there, ma'am." And he, and really. you know, it's the same kind of thing. After you mentioned it to me, I kind of went and looked. Um, uh, and yeah, it's the same kind of thing. Now, this isn't necessarily a story that we have to go. Uh, page by page on but it's real uh what my note is it's kind of like law and order sgu special brand yeah, unit you know? absolutely absolutely <laughs> it's very you know, procedural need- yeah needless to say every single panel by cliff chang is totally masterfully done absolutely he makes it look easy mm-hmm. he, he makes it look like uh he, he's an olympic athlete it's like, uh, you know, Alex Toth, eat your heart out. Yeah. Minimal Horrible. lines, like these little, t- like minimal detail, but yeah. what comes out to is like a ton of detail somehow, or it's like. Yeah. So anyway, she goes to this crime scene and the, the structure of the story is that um, they use the crime scene to unlock the case. Right, exactly. And 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 that work is cross cut between red background and flashbacks. Yeah. Of Grendel doing the deed. There, doing the like, deed. Right. Cutting off fingers, uh slashing people. Um just I mean, it is a brutal, brutal scene. I guess also reminiscent of that first brutal scene in Behold the Devil, where it's that two page spread and it's just bodies everywhere which is a fun background on my work computer. <laughs> don't, don't tease me with Behold the Devil. It is absolutely the, like, the, the, it's, it's dessert. It's like the best. I can't wait to get there, man. It's, it's so the best good. dessert we'll ever have. It's such an, you know, it's eight issues. It's like three times the length of any of the other stories. Yes. It is absolutely heartbreaking. And it's what, it's from 2008, I believe. Yeah, it is. That's the first time that I bought a new Grendel book, mm. like when it was coming out. So I didn't get into them till about that time. And then that started coming out and I remember buying a few. And being it's like, it's so good. It's it's so good. The other thing with the flashbacks is that it looks like Cliff Chang is using, um, it's, uh, there's red, the red, red is blood, you know, right. of course. Um, but here red, in the flashbacks, red is the background. And then the flashbacks are also denoted by what looks like perhaps that black Prismacolor pencil. Right, exactly. That, just, that yeah. kind of brings a little bit more dimension to it, which is, mm. which is quite interesting. It's a, a big matte, matte trick. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they continue just kind of like, a, this is a funny scene, he cut off an ear and he must have thrown it at the mirror and it went down into this like jar below it. And she's like, hole in one there. <laughs> yeah, and it was like, Clearly intentional. Clearly, uh, yeah, he's just a, a lightning master. fast like decision of oh, maybe they'll find it in here. You know? <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Uh, Reservoir Dogs, right? Uh, and um, it, it, it also it paints the picture of this surgical element of of the way Grendel does things. He leaves no trace. You know, he's a master. There's no yeah. footprints, there's no fingerprints, there's no nothing. How did he get in? How did he get out? He Batman 66 it. Actually, I don't yeah. think he climbed up. I think he went to the roof and then climbed down Maybe. is what I'm getting. I think you're right. Yeah, we'll look at the direction of his his bandana. Oh, you're right. Yeah, absolutely. You're, no, no, I I thought he went up, but you you made me you made me see the armor was. When I looked at this image of him climbing, I was like you can't just like strap it on his back. Like, you know, you're gonna, 
Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway uh, you know, good or, stuff. or like, I wish that we had a Grendel rope, that it was a fork, a Grendel fork rope. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was holding on to us. You can't win them all. Yeah. I think it's also important to notice that, you know, the guy in the pineapple shirt, the, the capo, what's his name, Tony the Pill or something like that? Something like that. Tony Zastapil is, uh, I think he's a Chacon uh, associate. It's got to be somebody like um, that. And so my, you know, and the other thing is that um, this story takes place seemingly at the, the in the Grendel as assassin time. He's not a, not a mob boss known just commodity, yet. right? Because I'm pretty sure that when that Liz is, I don't remember, Liz either ends up heading up the Grendel unit in Behold the Devil, yeah, or she like does. it's already established. It's like, this so is this, I, this is the start <laughs> of that. And, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, you see, because they don't know Grendel by name yet, because they're not right. like picking out his MO, you know, like the two, yeah. uh, these two, slashes were made by the same weapon they say and they you know i love this where it's like a large cylindrical puncture wound and it pulled the meat right out you know if you're thinking you stick that fork in and then turn it it's gonna cut out a perfect like little tube of meat that he yeah. could just make you know slide right out or something like that so yeah it's a wonderful like uh moment to moment sequence where absolutely her hands tell the story <laughs> really really good <laughs> yeah yeah man and then uh, they continue to kind of look around and she's like oh you're saying like plunge twist pull yeah and so just de the devil and then they find one final thing actually which is the classic notepad trick um that we see at jackie treehorn's jackie place and big, <laughs> and big lebowski <laughs> and you know so she rubs the pencil on this paper and she finds a note um from Teddy to Tony, or no, from Tony to Teddy. Yeah. So who's Teddy? Teddy Boy Chacon. Teddy, Teddy Chacon. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So he's writing a letter. Grendel basically forced him to write this letter under duress yeah. and then sent it off to Teddy Boy, yeah, who they say. So it looks like Teddy Boy Chacon's behind all this, but is he? And perhaps if we take this story as a precursor to the next story, maybe right. it's- That's my next question. Right, like he's try he's using this information here to set up the meeting that takes place next, or or sets up the face to face with Teddy Boy, or sets up all the future moves that he's going to make against Teddy by already infiltrating and already manipulating, starting to kill his the organization. Because when I read this, my my thought was when I read the two stories, my thought was, is he already working for Teddy, or it's clearly he's not at this point, yeah, yeah, right? But, but it's just like. What a, you know. But he's honing in. He's like. Devious he, bastard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like really honing in on, on Teddy Boy. Yeah. Cool. Really cool. Um, and then on the final page, they roll over one of the people and there's a big G carved in the forehead. And, and, you know, so that's one of the first clues on her quest to find Grendel. And uh, we see that he is looming heavily over her now that there's something in this city that we don't know of. And, Mm -hmm. I'm forming the SGU. By my, my law and order, SGU is brought to you by Matt Wagner. Detail. <laughs> yeah. Or whoever. <laughs> Wagner's T Art Store. TM, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, my when I read this one and the next one by a uh, friend of the show, Andy Kuhn, I, my thought is that I think there will be another short story collection oh, i'd love that at one day at one point and i think that we, i mean or wishful thinking i would like there to be another short story collection and i would like the sequence of all three to be more redone more sequenced because like the next time i read this i'm gonna do it as like if we did this again we would do it sequentially. Well, maybe that's something we can work on too, the uh, yeah. preferred reading order for Black, White, and Red, White, and Black. Right. right. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Uh, I, I thought this played really well, and, and reading it, I thought it was a great, uh, I mean, really cinematic that just plays out in your head perfectly. Like, yeah. the, the storytelling uh, trick is something that instantly clicks with your head after seeing any amount of television, and, and it 
just really worked, yeah. I thought, very, very well. Yeah, absolutely. Killer. Uh, Cliff Chang, like every drawing is super appealing. Yeah. The acting is great. The staging is great. Camera's wonderful. All the little details. And it's really cool it's, how this character comes back. And I wonder if it was like yeah. something that they thought of or was it like just kind of a, on a lark? Or... Well, you know, he likes, you know, he likes these tough gals. You know. mm -hmm. I also like that the only time that the graphite is used in the present is for the Jackie tree horning. Oh, for right. like actually the, yeah. yeah. He's like, I got this. I might as well An just do it. Pencil, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. Good. So this are, we, we're onto our last tale of the week. Devil's Ass Assumption. Right. Um, like assumption meaning like to, to rise up and assume. That's your, Ascension or, though. Oh, what, oh uh, <laughs> cut this, cut this part. Cut out. this out, this niche. I do, I do think that there's a, a meaning of assumption to, that is, uh, similar to ascend oh really to, to i don't want to say to assume your position but to like to ascend to your role mm -hmm. anyway um a, a little about andy kuhn i was trying to get him on the show he, he said he would have done it but i do believe that he is like super busy uh he was working on the tmnt uh, that's where i first learned of his work is from his turtles work um, it was great. He actually did the turtles design that went into the Batman Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, cool! And and uh, so some and he actually got action figures of that. And so that's I think that's a huge honor. Uh, he was working on the Last Ronin, which is this new uh, tale that was from an old story written by Eastman and Laird. However, he he left the book uh, for for personal reasons, it seems. So. Uh, ben Bishop's finishing it. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. So I didn't really want to bug him too much after I kind of learned all that. Um, but he's, shout he's out to you, Andy. Around, much yeah. love. He, he is on the cartoonist K Fave. He's been around for 30 years. He's done everything. Yeah. It he's done see. a ton of work. And yeah. honestly, his, his turtles work is, is beautiful. It, it kind of like took a minute to grow on me, grow on me. But then um, I watched a thing that he did a uh, drink and draw with Kevin Eastman and Ben Bishop when they were at a, um, comic-con and they auctioned off these pieces that they did and his piece was absolutely beautiful it was so yeah. cool um uh, he's, and, and he's his style grew, grew a lot from here yeah. yeah i mean it's still great but so uh we see teddy boy chaconi kind of doing his due diligence to make himself look like a fine upstanding citizen you know he's not obviously we and, can tell well, everyone everyone knows that he's not you know? right and he's even <laughs> he's like, like well I'm, uh, I'm in and out of trouble you know mostly yeah you know what i mean, I, mean. <laughs> yeah. I like i like that it's one word you know what i'm saying it's one word and stuff uh, really cool uh yeah so he's, he gives he's father at, he gives father nuncio a check for 56k the the for the priest in the parish that tried to raise him right. So, exactly. It's very nice. Uh, they did. Did you do notice it. that there's a date on the check? Nine three eighty six. I I just saw that. That's like the interesting only timestamp. That's get. like the only timestamp that we've ever had. So that's really cool. That that's meaningful too. That's a, that's super helpful. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, here he is, second page. He's telling some dirty jokes, really uh, the off most, color. Not not just dirty, just like racist and horrible yeah, straight jokes. Straight up the racist. Priest. <laughs> the priest is like, um, okay, tell me another one um, about fucking kids and maybe I'll laugh. Jesus, Eli. Anyway, so then he gets I, a, I want let, let me segue into a compliment on the lettering. All right, yeah. Uh, it, it really unique, uh, clear, efficient european flavored lettering approach and andy kuhn did the lettering himself as well yeah yeah really really, really cool. unique. Love um, it. it's it, it works really well never seen anything like it from the states at least mm -hmm. um, and and is his turtles work does it look like this because again it has kind of this like it's and global it, flair to it. Really. it. It is like that. It's even a little more angular uh, to, to like the point how I was saying at first, I, I didn't know how to uh, interpret it. And uh, it, it really grew on me because he takes some, um, a lot of the, the IDW turtles work, the artists are given a lot of leeway to make them look however they want it. And I really enjoyed the way he did it. Um, it's, it's a little different than this, a little more angular, angular and a little less detailed even. Yeah. Um, but uh, so here, Teddy Boy, kind of this this panel has got a little bit of a um, 
early Ma food or uh, Jamie Hewlett type of feel with the hand and the, the spiral hands, yeah. knuckles and mm -hmm. the um, the shading, but um, it's great. And so his boys, his guys, like we gotta get out of here. You know, we got some something brewing, and uh, he excuses himself, and then he's right down to business. Yeah, we should we should uh, talk a little bit about the Chacones and just kind of refresh ourselves on the other. Teddy boy appearances that we recall. He's, uh, For sure. I think he's in that very first Primer 2 story. I think so. Yeah, he's kind of the Chacon family. Of this tale, right. Or, no, it's a version of a later story. The Chacon family is is the, the main crime family. Kind of like, um, what is it in Batman? Um, uh, shit. The Falcons. Falcons, yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, you know They're, Batman. Well, I know that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that they are. Here's where I think they are. I think that they're positioned in the middle in New York. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're good enough that Grendel can make, they have potential for Grendel to make something out of them. And Teddy Boy is a big enough fuck up that Hunter won't have too much of a challenge right. like destroying his organization. Well, and manipulating, because doesn't he kind of take over their family? Like, I don't think he's looking to wipe them out. I think he's trying to look, I think he like, well, uses so them as the can, stepping stone, right? He yeah, takes yeah. over them, and then now he is the leader of them and then yeah. uses that to kind of rise up. So the core story that's in canon is the Tim Bradstreet story, the super dense found object. Yes. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. newspaper clipping story. Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm trying to remember if there's any other... There's ones where they mention the Chaconis. Yeah, there's... The Chacones, but I don't... I think that... This is the only time that we, besides Primer 2, where we get to see... Well, Teddy this is really Boy. Teddy Boy's story. I mean, he's this the main character. Story. So I, I just wish that I could read this earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, give me all the that. Teddy stuff here at once. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is my last derailment before we can just move on. I love panel one where he tells the joke. Like, the acting and the face, like, like the glee in his eyes. He's such a piece of shit. As he, he loves that joke. joke. He says yeah. he loves that one. Like, um, dude, what? And, right. And then also the wife being there, it talks uh, in Tim Bradstreet, it talks about how all of the like shell corporations, all of the, all the business fronts are in her name. Oh, interesting. So she's, so it's like, okay, if he leaves this, cause she'll just, she'll just MC the rest of the night, you know, if need be. Right. Anyway. So what's um, the, what's the, what's the issue here? Uh, yeah, so um, there's there's guy Leroy. They got this redneck uh, murderer who they assigned a job, and um, something happened, and he didn't get it done. Someone someone scooped him. Someone got there before him, and he didn't uh, get to do it. So he's like, "Pauly, let's go," and they they head down to the docks. Obviously, right? Yeah, that's you have to. You have to. That's where actually it all um, no, it might be under, under a bridge. No, yeah. they're under the Brooklyn Bridge. It looks yeah. Like. He, anyway, he doesn't like water. being down there. As long as you're by the water, if you do something bad, you put it in the water, so you'll be okay. Yeah, his boy, Paulie, keeps saying all these funny little slogans like, uh, it's so damp down here, I got mushrooms growing out of my ears. Yeah, that's You know, he's like, like shut up, uh, shut up, you. I got bigger things on my mind. And, yeah, they and, have some good back and forth. Did you like the one where they talk about the dog breeds? Oh, I, I remember. A little, a little confused. By oh, that. yeah, yeah, he's so like, funny. no, you're, you're a German <laughs> shepherd. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, and, and I like this. I like this line too. He's like, "Easy, it's him. Big red car, big red neck." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it says Leroy, you had some trouble. And uh, great detail, Andy Coon, on this Leroy guy. Your guy's yeah, dead. But but he's like, "I'm not gonna charge you." He's like, "Oh, you're not gonna charge me, huh?" Yeah. Well, he set him up for a hit, and someone else got someone there. Someone else hit. Someone else got there first. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, he's just like, oh, that's so great. That's so nice of you. You're not going to charge me because I don't rightly know what happened tonight is what Leroy says. And, like, he's starting to recount it. Um, great shading uh, by Andy Kuhn. Uh, I yeah. love his figures, man. I'll tell you, though, I don't think – I don't know if the haircut reads to me as redneck as quite as, you know. As it would him, if he had – Give him a mullet. Yeah, yeah he's got to get that <laughs> mullet going on. Maybe they had him take it out because it looks like the – the party or the business in the front parts there, but not the party in the back. I don't rightly know what happened tonight. Oh, 
Yeah, so there must have been another contract asshole out there. So then that's when – anything else you want to say about this page here? That's great. Andy Kuhn, I look forward to reading more of your work. This is, this is really tremendous stuff. The chiaroscuro that's coming up and the framing and, like, the hand acting is yeah. really, really on point. And, like, on panel three on the next page of the super close-up of the, of the cigarette – where like the nose overlaps the balloon. Yeah. I, I was, I was, I had to read some web comic today for, uh, because my client wanted me to. I read a hundred pages of this early work of web comic from 10 years ago. And of wow. course it's still going to this day and it looks a lot different now, but it was like the worst lettered thing I've ever read in my life. And like none of the panels were, were composed like, they were composed knowing that a balloon would go there, but then they just like drop it on and everything is like, you know, everything, everyone's hairline is cut off by a huge balloon. And uh, yeah. just like, <sighs> drives me crazy. So I, I appreciate well-placed right. balloons. Yeah. So you mentioned chiaroscuro. So what do you mean by that? That's the shading. Uh... I think I'm talking mostly about panel two. Yeah. Um, the way that the, the, the high contrast of uh, the detail, like look at the way the light kind of pokes back into his forehead and in the creases in his eye and stuff and the way his nose kind of right. kind of pops out. I don't know, or maybe it's just a fancy term that I misuse. I <laughs> Who's to say? I don't know. Um, anyway, um, again, yeah. Leroy talks about two, the same kind of stroke that Liz Sparks was talking about before. Right. Two blades. Right. And so it really is at a point, we're at a point where people don't know who Grendel is yet. And that becomes clear here. And when he shows up, the time has come, the walrus says, as he is quoting The Walrus and the Carpenter by Lewis yeah. Carroll. So uh, my, my uh, point of reference for this poem, and I'm sure yours is also Kevin Smith, but as a, as a searcher, as a searcher in the 90s, it is quite funny that, as, as a searcher who came up in the 90s, it's funny that Kevin Smith is like sort of my guru in a lot of, you know, yeah, in some ways. Sure. So in Dogma, he has um, Matt Damon talks about That's this right. poem. Do you remember right. that? Yes. He's talking to nuns at the airport about how the walrus is uh, like Eastern religion and the carpenter is Christ. And, um, you know, what do they do is they dupe these oysters into giving up their lives. Right. You know, they, they sell them, they sell them on, you know, a party or a, a good time or a life of reason and, uh, and they shuck them and kill them and eat them. <laughs> God. So I always thought that was, uh, I, you know, when I, I thought, did Kevin Smith make this up or is that like, Oh, like is the that idea? what it is? Yeah, like, is, is that, that what, really how people what interpret it? it? <laughs> yeah, I don't so, know. Anyway, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's kind of Dada the poetry, um, and it's 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 fitting, um, and it's classic, and it's literary, but I'm not sure exactly what Hunter is trying to say. By reciting I think it's poem. it's the theatrics, man. It's the yeah. whole thing of him where it's theatrics, and he's right. He knows all these books and poems, and he's like, you know, maybe he just was like, you know, saying shit to freak people out. You know, they're like, I'm so calm, and you guys are like, you know, freaking out right here. But it's it, it's interesting his motives here because he's not trying to to kill everyone. He's not trying to slaughter. He's trying to like get a, a message across, and that's when Leroy just flips out because Grendel lands on his car and smashes yeah. it up. And he's like, that's not, that's not my car. Yeah. You don't, you don't touch my fucking car. And he's like, open and up. Leroy with the slurs going wild. Mm -hmm. More of that chiaroscuro. Teddy boy's acting is wonderful in this panel. He just like gets the fuck off. He's like, no. Nope. Like, yeah. hell no. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a killer. He's just, he one of those guys who sits at the top and yeah complains about bone spurs we've yeah, we've got a great uh steve ditko animation panel yeah it's awesome as, uh, as grendel uh you know evade, evades the the gunfire 
Mm -hmm. All to the tune of the walrus and the carpenter. And uh, that is until Leroy catches a fork in the throat. Yeah. Not before humiliating him by throwing garbage all over him, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Really good. And, and I mean, Grendel, Grendel kind of throws his fork down, and, like, and so he's down, and he has to, like, get his fork out from Teddy Bo or from uh, yeah. Leroy's trope. Yeah. Um, uh, Andy puts some really, really great uh, motion on the, the mask ties. Oh yeah, they're almost in that like double helix shape as he, yeah, like, as he pulls it out, it out. Yeah. And, and 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 the negative space too that kind of shows the blood or kind of like the mess that happens when he pulls out. Yeah, really good. And he's like, "Easy, fellas." And so, so this is where oh, this is interesting. So he, I didn't see this the last time. He puts, he puts Leroy back in the car and turns yeah. it on. Well, he says, he says. This ain't just about showmanship, is it? And, but instead of answering, he does this sequence that's like totally like way more theatrical than anything he's done. Yeah. yeah. Puts him yeah. in there and oh okay, and drives the car off off the um Yeah. And and kind of gets rid of the evidence for not only Teddy Boy Ciccone, but for himself. And so it's almost like a gesture of goodwill to show you like perhaps we're on the same side here, or perhaps uh you have something that I want well, yeah. and you're going to give it to me. The whole but, thing is a but, job, a job application. Exactly. Right. You know? <laughs> and so that's when Grendel tries to uh, describe some things and, and we kind of get some answers here. This is kind of like a pivotal meeting uh, to, to show the movement of Grendel from assassin to mob, mob, the rise in the mob. I am yeah. the demon that comes in the night. I am the death dealer to end all dreams. And I am a fear as old as recorded history himself. I am Grendel. That's, I mean, does he ever introduce himself like that ever? Like just, just this one time, which is sort of why I wish I could, you know, in my preferred reading order, this is a key right, story this would have been in the way, beginning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, when I read that, it was one of those things where it's like, I'm sure Mac got that from Pulp. For us, it's obviously Darkwing Duck, who must have gotten it from the shadow. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know? yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. And also his theatrics ramp up and up and up and up. He says, okay. what, more theatrics? He goes, much more. And it's like, <laughs> much this more. Is like, it's like the most like dramatic you know, entrance yeah. speech ever. This whole thing is talk about the. Uh, I want to talk about the, um, you, you'd mentioned the, the right-handed stack when he puts him in the car, and then we cut to some Zappa three panels of the car, high angle, you can see the undercarriage, then it splashes with the really jagged uh, waves, mm -hmm. wonderful lighting, mm -hmm. and then as it sinks, the bubbles, so there's just like all this like great contrast and movement and like the story really kind of like comes to life in my imagination. Yeah, I definitely. love it. Yeah. I'm interested to see some of the other work that Andy Kuhn did. I, I don't really know his other work. So uh, I'm interested to see, you know, not that TMNT isn't like, um, I don't know, but it's like, I would like to see his smaller published work, you know, his, his, when he's doing what he's, what he wants. And you know. my sense is that he's sort of been all over the place. Yeah. I, when, when, you know, it, I encountered him as a friendly face in the group where we met. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, Oh, this guy's a seasoned pro. And Great. I thought that, I thought that was really cool that like we were, unknowingly you know rubbing shoulders online with a guy who's sort of like he's been doing it since we were in short pants which is yeah which is for sure really cool yeah. i think i had i had uh, reached out to him a few times and and obviously being a huge turtles fan like you just keep up with all the artists i've been following the idw series so it was like i knew of him and then i i don't know if i invited him or or you know when i saw him come into the group i was like oh hell yeah this is sweet and then so i was like trying to continue talking with them really cool and then um you know teddy ciccone at the end here he says yeah well let's just say you convinced me you're hired and he's got this kirby hand going and you're hired Grendel, Grendel, huh? yeah. <laughs> yes, um, you're hired i like that um he this is very batman he like slinks off without being without being seen yeah yeah we so don't see is, him maybe this is a really quintessential 
important story. It is. You know, it, it, it's, it's, oh, man. It's not like tangential. It's not just some like a, uh, an adventure, but it's really something that uh, is the start of his rise to power. You know, it's like, yeah. And like I said, the change from this unknown assassin to his rise up the power in the, in the family and right. up and, the seaboard massacre. And when we were, and when we were talking about Tim Bradstreet, which is the story that seemingly comes, I don't know, I don't say directly after, but this is, Tim Bradstreet is the story of how he, of what's going on in the family as Grendel kind of turns the screws on everything. Right. is that story and then there's also other there's uh the troy nixie story that comes before where he's just an assassin okay yeah yeah and then there's mike allred where he in at the end of mike allred he becomes an, it's about jocasta into becoming grendel yes and then there's all he's also it also cuts back and forth to him infiltrating a hotel room to kill somebody. So there's a very, you know, clear se sequence of this stuff. And then it sort of ends like Devil's Vagary. Like the big deal with Devil's Vagary is that like, there's no more Chacones. This is New York. Right. Pre-Seaboard Massacre. Right. You know. But, but like, you know, now Grendel's in charge of the Chacone family and it's not called the Chacone family. It's called whatever, Grendel's family, the Grendel family or yeah, I, I wonder I think, if. I, well, it's the, I think it's that he's once he takes over Teddy Boy's organization, it I think it very quickly spreads to the other families in New York. Right. Yeah. And then they're like, "Well, New York might not be big enough for my ambition." <laughs> <laughs> New York is run by Grendel. This was a great, great week. We say it every week. This was a really great <laughs> week of stories. Yeah, we're not going to have a bad week. <laughs> What do, what do we got next week? I don't know. Oh, yeah, good call. Who's this artist? All right. So next week, we are coming back with Chase the Devil by Mike Hawthorne. I don't know him. But it cool looks style. Good. Yeah, mm -hmm. really, really exciting stuff. Oh, the, I'm sorry. The only the only red in Andy Kuhn is the is the car. Oh, in the whole the, story. The red, the red car. I mean, there's, a, there's red in the title, but it's <laughs> it's mostly the car and that's cool uh, that's well yeah. done it's in the, title, the yeah. assumption is that grendel assumes the professional role that this schmuck the king of death and violence Lee, uh, leroy once held mm -hmm. anyway, sorry to sorry to do that oh so no, we no, got no this one we got devil's yeah. chase by that yep. guy devil's dash by tom fowler and devil's crazy. karma art by andy watson lettering by jason ham and Wooder Scaps font described designed by Woodrow Phoenix. Interesting. So we'll be covering those three stories next week. And then the two weeks after that, we have two very special guests uh, whose stories will be featured as well, which I am very excited about. Far fucking out, man. Far well, fucking out, man. What a what a week. What a podcast. <laughs> what a cast. The devil in detail. Uh, don't forget to leave us a five-star comment on iTunes. Uh, reach out to us if you're interested in hanging out on the cast and talking Grendel. And uh, with that, Ben, anything more? Viva Grendel. Viva and keep on Grendelin. Until next time, Viva.